this thing on? Okay, cue exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads, so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. I'm your host, Iman the Messenger. Um, And I'm going to read a passage really quickly. But whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as loss because of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as mere rubbish that I may gain Christ, and may be found in him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Um, A few years ago, when I was um, in another really, really low place uh, in my life, the Lord whispered something to me. He said, Emmanuel, I trust you with suffering. Now, um, (laughs) sure many of you are confused. Many of you are wondering, well, you know, where, where's Emmanuel going to go with this? Um. But track along, do make sure to watch this video to the end or listen to this podcast to the end. I guarantee you that it will bless you. It will change your perspective on suffering um, and it will make you appreciative, actually, um, for some of the sufferings that God has allowed uh, to operate in your life in different seasons. Trust me, it's all for a purpose and love is behind it and so as you can see in the title i've titled this episode the art of suffering the art of suffering because suffering itself is a beautiful art and suffering also produces beautiful art so um what does this all mean what is suffering all about um why do we have to suffer as followers of Christ? Um, how does suffering play a part in me being an unboxed, called, and creative person? Um, we'll go through the points. So, point number one. Suffering draws us nearer to God by putting less confidence in the flesh. Psalms 34 verse 18 it says this the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit and before i continue actually um the first um scripture that i read was philippians 3 verses 7 to 11 just in case any of you wanted to read that but yeah i'll read the scripture again psalms 34 verse 18 it says the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And so we see here in this scripture that there is a a nearness that you get to experience with the Lord 
when you are going through suffering. You know, suffering is actually not the time to <laughs> to be away from God. Because then you miss the benefits, right? You miss the benefits of that season. You know, there are some seasons in life where you may um you may suffer greatly and it's it's for a season, it's for a purpose, it's for a time period. And God wants to show you another side of himself that you have never, ever seen before. He wants to show you another layer, another dimension of his beauty, of his heart, of his power that will give you faith for future seasons when you're not suffering and when you're not going through hardship um, so that you may bless other people in those seasons. You know, it's hard to... It's hard to grow in faith and grow in the knowledge of certain things if you yourself have never encountered or experienced that. And so if God is trying to make you into a healer, he may take you through a period of time where you are afflicted in your body and you need to seek him so much more to receive healing. And once you've received healing, you are able to now know, oh, it is possible for people to be healed and so now when you pray for people for healing there is um more success because there is now the faith that links up with your prayer that you actually believe that that person can be healed because you yourself have been healed as well um and so i want to encourage you you know like if you are going through suffering if <laughs> If you've been suffering for a while, um, it might be because God has a plan to draw you closer to him. And you do yourself a big disservice um, when you, um, how do I say this? When you choose to suffer by yourself, maybe because you're upset with the Lord or, um, yeah, you'll find it hard to connect to him or you want to just sort out things by yourself it's a it's a it's a detrimental thing to do because the whole point of suffering is that you may know jesus more and you know to clarify the suffering that we are talking about here i'm not talking about bad decision making that leads to issues i am talking about suffering with christ suffering for christ i am talking about you've been obedient to God, but yet you're still suffering. You know, you're still going through a testing season. I'm talking about the trials and tribulations that come for us all. You know, the trials and tribulations that we find ourselves um, just battling with on a daily basis that have nothing to do with any bad decisions that we've made, you know. And so if you are in that season, if you are suffering, if you are being faced with trials and tribulations, draw nearer to God. Cry out to God. The Bible says here, as I said, it says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, there is a, another that dimension of salvation. There's another dimension of, of saving that we don't experience unless we go through suffering. There are certain things about the Lord and about his character that we will not be able to taste and see, you know, that that the Lord is good um, in those in those aspects. Um, I read another scripture. This is Matthew five from three to twelve. It says this and a lot of you will know this. It's the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn. For they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you 
and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in this same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so here we see Jesus is spinning things right he's putting he's flipping things on their head and he's he's trying to tell people that listen the kingdom of god is very very is backwards compared to this world you know this world is evil like let me just say it quite plainly the the crux of this world the bedrock the foundation of our systems the way that we talk to each other the way that we operate with each other um how we think how we work uh everything is rooted in rebellion it's rooted in human pride and ignorance of what is true and good and divine right and jesus is trying to let us know here that no this is the way of god like this is the way of the kingdom of god this is the truth right that supersedes this earth because remember this earth was created by god the kingdom of god was here before this earth this earth was created by god jesus lets us know here that you know blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven when he speaks about those who are poor in spirit here he's talking about those who understand their need for him and oftentimes if we don't go through any suffering we forget our need for God. This is why it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? Like, this is what Jesus is talking about. He's saying that, like, when you are somebody who, as far as you are concerned, all of your needs are met, you, it will, it's harder for you to see the spiritual, emotional, mental need for God because... You have all this money, you have these materials, um, your situation is fine, your like your circumstances are cool. You know what I mean? Your life is set up in a certain way. And so therefore, you don't perceive the actual need for God that you actually do have as a human being, right? The Bible says that eternity is in the heart of man. All of us have an eternal hole in our chest. That needs to be filled by God, which is why a rich person is still never satisfied. A healthy person is still never satisfied with their health, right? Like, no one is ever satisfied, like, completely. And the only way to get satisfied completely is by having a relationship with God who is eternally satisfying because he is eternal. And so, <clears throat> going back to what I was saying... Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You have to recognize your need for God. And in order to recognize your need for God, there has to be times of suffering for the Christian. And also, just by default of being in this wicked world, we are going to suffer because we are opposed to this world. We are like rubbing against, you know, the grain, right? We're against the grain um, of, this, of this world. And so therefore, the poor in spirit is going to be a reality for people who believe in Jesus and people who believe in God. And so this is a good thing. As I said, point number one, suffering draws us nearer to God by putting less confidence in the flesh. And I'll read um, a bit of that first scripture that I read at the beginning of the podcast, which is Philippians 3. Uh, this is verse 10. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Point number two, suffering builds character. So we see in James 1 verses uh, 2 to 4, it says this, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be complete and perfect, lacking in nothing. 
And so the 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 word perfect here, the word perfect here, because I you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of people read the scripture and they think, um, you know, perfect like <laughs> perfect and complete. I'll never be perfect, right? The word here, perfect, it doesn't refer to perfection in the sense of without blemish or, um, yeah, completely perfect in that regard. The word perfect here in the Greek that it's actually written in actually refers to being complete in various applications of labor, growth, mental, and moral character. It also refers to a completeness in the sense of a full-aged man or perfect. So essentially what James is saying here is that actually like the suffering that we go through on this earth, if we go through this suffering well with God, right? Holding on to God, putting our full faith and trust in the Lord, then what it's supposed to do is it supposed to work for our good? I find that there are many people who are living the opposite of this scripture, sadly, right? Where they don't consider it all joy when they encounter various trials. And actually, they run from trials. They run from suffering. They try to put band-aids on suffering and trials. And so what happens is that their faith is not tested, which means that they don't get endurance. They don't let endurance have its perfect result. And so therefore, they do not end up being perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And as I said here, that perfect and complete, it refers to maturity. And so we have a lot of Christians or a lot of, a lot of called and creative people who are supposed to be really mature in the world, right? Really mature, a really mature source of light in the world. But because they have forfeited suffering and they've forfeited that process of endurance, they don't have the weight inside of them to, um, to influence other people, right? Um, they don't have the weight inside of them to be a mature a uh, son or daughter of God to minister Jesus to other people. And, you know, we, we know that Jesus himself is mature. He's, he's the, he is the full maturity, right, <laughs> of God, right? And so how can other people see Jesus if us ourselves have not conformed to the maturity of Jesus via the Holy Spirit? taking us through these different challenges and sufferings right and so that is something uh, to think about this last bit of the scripture <clears throat> where it says um lacking in nothing actually refers once again in the greek it actually refers to somebody who wants for nothing right somebody who is completely satisfied and fulfilled Somebody who doesn't need to chase extra things to make themselves feel better about themselves, right? We all have our vices, um, <laughs> the extra things that we, we do to make ourselves feel better. For some people, it's going shopping. Like they need to go and buy clothes, otherwise they don't feel good about themselves. For some people, it is um, wearing excessive makeup, for instance. If they don't do that, they don't feel good about themselves. For some people... It is um, going to the gym, not for fitness or health reasons, but purely, purely for aesthetics. And if they aren't looking bulky, then they don't feel good about themselves. You know, for some people, it is um, food. That if they're not eating, you know, an amazing meal when they're feeling down, then they don't feel better about themselves. And so we all have different vices that we use to do this. But it is through the process of trials and tribulations, sufferings, that puts things into perspective for us. It produces endurance, and then it produces maturity in us as believers. So, as I said, point number two, suffering builds character. 
Point number three. Suffering reveals your friendship with Jesus and your enmity with the world. John 17, 14 to 15. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them away from the evil one. So let's pause here. John 17 is the high priestly prayer that Jesus prays um, sometime before he gets crucified. And it's, in a sense, it's the last, you know, full length prayer that we see in the Bible of Jesus praying to the Father. And, you know, here he's highlighting with the Father that, you know, the world has hated me because I'm not of this world. And so the world is also going to hate my followers because they also are not of this world. If you've been born again, you are you are not of this world anymore. You are of the kingdom of God. And so what this means is that the world, like the actual systems of the world, the spirits that operate in the world are naturally against you. They are they are literally they are naturally against you. And so what that means is you know, it is an indicator. So if you are going through suffering, I want you to understand that like suffering is suffering for Christ. Remember what I said earlier, not not suffering because of of just terrible life choices but let's say you're making the best life choices that you can you're following jesus you're obeying um you're you're spending time with the lord and you're doing all the things that he's asked you to do <clears throat> if you are suffering still whilst doing all of those things it is a sign that you are a friend of god it's a sign that you belong to the kingdom of god it's a sign that you're born again it's a sign that the enemy sees you as a threat. It's a sign that you are going, you are literally going against the grain, that you are pushing against the kingdom of darkness. You are pushing against how this world has been set up. That is why you are suffering. And that is a part of every believer's story who is following Jesus. If Jesus, who is perfect, and went against the world just in him being himself, suffered like that, then how much more will you also suffer by being yourself in Christ Jesus and naturally going against the world? And so I want you to be encouraged that suffering reveals your friendship with Jesus and your enmity with the world. I'll read another scripture. First John 2. 15 to 17, it says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God continues to live for ever. And so we see here once again that if you don't have the love of the world in you, but you have the love of the Father in you, then clearly there's going to be a clash because all of the things that are the love of the world are the things that make the world go round and round and round, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Lust of the flesh being what can make my flesh happy, what can bring me pleasure, you know? lust of the eyes what is it that is pleasing to my eyes what is it that i can um indulge in with my eyes that i probably shouldn't be looking at right that i probably should not be coveting right that i probably should not be envious of or jealous of or trying to acquire because it looks good to my eyes even though it is not mine and it is not my portion and then you've got the pride of life which is the pride of accomplishments achievements um yeah the, the the pride of 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 what you can do of your strengths you know of you being above certain people and them being below you that is the pride of life and as believers we don't believe in things like that we understand that things are by grace we understand that it is god who lets us even work we understand that it is by god's grace that we've been made certain ways 
and have different functions. It is by God's grace that I am creative and, you know, and somebody else isn't creative. I didn't, I didn't make myself creative. God made me this way and I grew in it over time. And so as believers, we are naturally, naturally countercultural. Um, and so that's another example of the fact that if you are suffering, it reveals your friendship with God and your enmity against the world. Point number four, suffering with Christ well is a testimony for others. Hebrews 11, 36 to 40 says this, and others experienced mocking and flogging and further chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. Oh God. They were tempted. They were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, people of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts, on mountains, and sheltering in caves and holes in the ground. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. I, 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 really, I don't know. I, don't, I hope you guys really just listen to what I just read. Right? Like, essentially, the writer of Hebrews here is letting us know that the people of old, you know, whether it be the early church or some of the prophets in the Old Testament who, you know, lived to pass on this message of the gospel so that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit today and be forgiven of our sins, they went through crazy sufferings. Some people were sawn in half, bruh, killed by the sword, had to wear goat skin, like, had to hide in caves and in and dig literally dig holes in the ground and hide in the holes until their adversaries went past and the, the bible says here that like and all these having gained approval through their faith did not receive the promise but it was because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. So essentially, the suffering that a lot of these guys went through, like, it was for us. It was so that today, we would be able to have Jesus and, you know, in certain places in the world, like for me, for instance, who lives in the Western part of the world, I'm not being persecuted for my faith every day. I get to freely worship. I get to freely tell the truth of the gospel. Like, <laughs> these guys who went through what they went through, they didn't get to do that. And I just find this, you know, absolutely beautiful and mind-blowing and so i say like in the same vein maybe the suffering that you're going through today is supposed to be a testimony for other people maybe it is bigger than you right maybe the suffering you're going through and the, the art that it's going to create in life and in, in people's lives and even some of the things that you will create through your pain is bigger than you the suffering you're going through is only short and temporary, right? Like, these people who are who went before us, they aren't suffering now. That suffering was temporary, though it was absolutely crazy. But guess what? Without that crazy suffering that they went through, we would not have these testimonies. We would not have these stories that encourage us when we are going through testing ourselves. Because, look, I can look at this, and then I can look at my life and I can go, wait a second, what on earth am I complaining about? I am blessed. <laughs> like, I am blessed. The Bible literally says that 
um, <laughs> that that the prophets were waiting for the day that we get to experience. Like they were waiting for this era where the Holy Spirit would be given freely to everyone. But they themselves, they didn't get to see that. They themselves had to go through the harshness of the faith to make sure that Christ could come, Christ could die, Christ could rise again, and we could all receive the Spirit freely because of the forgiveness of Jesus' blood. And so I want you to really think about that. I'll say it one more time. Suffering with Christ well is a testimony for others. And so I'll read this last scripture in this section. 1 Peter 5, 6 to 11, it says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, having cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brothers and sisters who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So yeah, you know, first Peter, Peter's saying pretty much similar things, right, to the writer of Hebrews here. He's saying that like, I mean, firstly, in the last section, he's saying like, you're only suffering for a little while. And I know when you are suffering, it can feel like I've been here forever. It can feel like you are suffering endlessly. But in the grand scheme of life and also eternity because remember we've got to be eternal minded here guys we are not going to be on this earth forever right eternity you are only suffering for a while so make the most of your suffering draw near to god get closer to him than you would ever be able to get to, uh, close to him in your entire life like it's only through suffering you know that you're able to reach certain levels in of intimacy in god it's only through suffering that god gives you certain creative ideas it's it's only through suffering that god gives you certain levels of authority and anointing in the spirit and so let's not let's not waste our times of suffering you know i love it as well because there's one other thing he says here where he says look Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And so that even tells us how we suffer well, how we go through trials well. That you cast your anxieties on him. You don't just suffer and just, you know, <laughs> I don't know, just sit there taking everything by yourself. No, you cast your anxieties on him whilst you are going through the suffering. That is what gets you closer to him. That is what creates more intimacy. That is what, um, but that is what changes the narrative, right, of what you're going through. So, I'll give a few examples, right. So I don't know if you guys know this song. Um, it is well with my soul. That song, right? Um, it is well. Uh, whatever my lot thou has taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. The writer of that song, <clears throat> my gosh, he actually wrote that song after his wife and his children died on a boat ride coming towards him. Their, I, I believe their boat sank and he got word that they had both died in, 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 that, in that accident. And it was from that suffering that the Holy Spirit partnered with his emotions and he created one of the most anointed and blessed songs of all time, which is It Is Well With My Soul. We've been singing that for years. 
people have been remixing it for years. That song touches the human experience so tangibly. But that song would have never been produced if he did not process his suffering with God. Suffering will happen. And so I'm not even here to say that it was God who caused his wife and children to perish. I don't believe that. But I believe that just virtue of the world that we're in, it was going to happen and it happened. And with it happening, God, like he, he, he used that to bless us. You know, he used that to bless us. Another example is Paul. Paul suffered for this gospel. Jesus told him that you're going to suffer for my name. But while Paul was in prison in the worst time of his life, that was when he wrote some of the best books in the Bible. Some of the best theology that we see. Some of the best things that help us to wrap our heads around this faith. Paul wrote those things whilst he was in the worst suffering of his life. Suffering well creates beautiful things it creates beautiful art we've got jesus himself crucified if jesus did not die jesus did not go through the suffering and the pain he went through none of us would be here i think that one is that one is self-explanatory we've got emperor nero who used to put christians in hot oil burning hot oil and he used to light them, he used to light Christians on fire and make them run around in his giant back garden. And he would call it uh, the night lights. He would, he would call them the lamps, the, the, the lamps of his garden. And it was from that period of time that the church actually grew. It's crazy that through suffering, God, it's like, Growth is accelerated in the kingdom of God through suffering. If we suffer with God, we don't turn from him. If we look towards him, we may find the biggest growth in our lives. And some of us are missing promotion. We're missing um, everything that God has for us because we will not turn to God during suffering, but we, are, we keep turning away from him. And then I'll give you guys some examples from my own life, right? Um. I've had seasons where I am suffering in my life. I don't feel like I have the guidance I want. I don't feel like I have the resources I want. I don't feel like I have the blessings I want. I don't feel like, you know, um, things are going in a great way for me. But it was in those seasons where I would cry out to God extensively. And whilst I was doing that, I was burning like for people. Those were the seasons. Some of those seasons of my life of, of serious suffering was where I was prophesying the most. And I was prophesying, I was prophesying details that I've never gotten before in my life. I was seeing that God was partnering with me, speaking to people. Their lives were changing completely, like changing the trajectory of their destinies in their lives. But I myself still wasn't getting, you know, what I thought I needed, what I, what, you know, what I wanted. But I realized that, guess what? Through those trials and tribulations, like I said before in James, I was maturing. And I was getting to a point where I would lack nothing. Where I wouldn't have all of these wants. Or actually, I'd realize that, no, actually, I have all that I need. And I would realize the blessing of suffering with Jesus. And I would know him all the more whilst he's partnering with me to also help other people. And so that's just an example um, for you as well as to how, how suffering creates art. If we will suffer well, if we will hold on to the Lord, if we will cry to the Lord about the pain that we're going through. All right, and here's one more thing. I've got a, a quote to read that I wrote down uh, some time ago. This is like a caption from an Instagram post that I did some years ago. I pray that this, this blesses you. I've seen it all. Healing, redemption, deliverance, breakthrough, miracles, 
been involved in all five of those as well. I've seen people's whole lives be shifted within days, weeks, months and years because of a word that I had delivered. But I've also seen and continue to live in a beautiful family that juggles ailments and disease. I know grief and decay more than the former. But the greatest gift that God gave me was love and sonship. I am glad that I fell in love with him more, more than what he could do for me. He's already done everything anyway. And this contextualizes everything. What if God trusted me with suffering? What if his love supersedes my years of pain, the years of impact and inspiration to others going through the same things and more? What if he wanted to make a healer out of you? What if he wanted to show the world that his love is better than life itself through my life itself? What if God cried with me? Jesus wept as Lazarus died, but allowed the proving to continue for my sake and the sake of others who need to see him. Maybe there is something fascinating and shocking about a man on fire, but not consumed. The burning bush that Moses saw grabbed his attention and then he saw God. So maybe God wants to do the same with your life, suffering Christian. Maybe God wants to turn you into a burning bush who is on fire with trials and, and sufferings, but on fire for him and not consumed by the fire of the trials and the sufferings. What if how you suffer is more important than how you soar with Christ? What if your greatest art would come from your greatest loss. And lastly, I say this, John 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. And so here, greater fruit comes from greater loss. You will not become more fruitful without seasons of suffering you may reach a ceiling where things are really comfortable for you right now and things are easy but suffering will come and it's to take you to the next level it's to produce more fruit that the world may see more fruit of jesus christ through your life and so here's the last thing i'll say i was reminded of this yesterday when god said to me those who are trusted with suffering can be trusted with glory. This is the art of suffering. Thanks for listening. Hey, Iman here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented um, or given a review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time.